Hi folks, welcome to Crisco's Corner. Unfiltered commentary. And that's your truth, the real truth. Please like, share, and subscribe. And as always, thank you for your support. Welcome back from the conservative daily briefing.com. This is a really good website. I just found this and it's an article on the subject that I wanted to talk about who's really president of the United States. And this is from May of this year, but I think this even has way more relevance now than I did than in May when this article was written. This is late August and this is just shortly after, of course, the Afghanistan F up as Joe Biden's a continued gaff his way through his first few months as president now costing lives for most Americans is beginning to wonder who is running the show now it's interesting they list if a Biden's cabinet and senior White House officials look familiar to you it's because they are and this administration is beginning to look remarkably similar to another in recent history The following is only the short list of former President Barack Obama's leadership team. Now, if you look at this, you're going to gasp. You're going to gasp. Is this Obama's third term? Well, let's look. Ron Klain, White House Chief of Staff, worked as as Vice President Biden's Chief of Staff as a czar under Obama and former President Al Gore's Chief of Staff. Okay. Jim O'Malley Dillon, Deputy Chief of Staff, former Beto O'Rourke campaign manager. Eat. Wait, I got to do a sound effect on that one. <laughs> Beto O'Rourke campaign manager and top aide to former President Barack Obama. Anthony Blinken, Secretary of State, Deputy Secretary of State for former President Barack Obama. Pete Buttigieg. No, he didn't work for Obama. But I love how they describe this. He did not work for Obama, but I threw him in because he's overly qualified to be cabinet secretary. Being a failed presidential candidate and a two-two mayor of a small Midwestern city makes one eminently qualified to be a White House cabinet secretary, doesn't it? I like the sarcasm. Gene Sullivan. Now we go on to more important matters. National Security Advisor. Worked for both Hillary Clinton at the State Department and Barack Obama and was the chief negotiator for the Iranian nuclear deal. Alejandro Morakas, Mayorkas, I believe it's pronounced, Secretary of Homeland Security, worked for both Bill Clinton and Barack Obama. He was the designer of the Dreamer program for the illegal children of illegal aliens who entered America. Yeah, you get in the picture now? Avril Haynes, Director of National Intelligence, former security advisor to Obama. John Kerry, that mental pygmy. Climate change secretary. I was not aware this was an actual government-sanctioned paying job title, but apparently it is now. Neera Tandon, Director of Office of OMB, worked for Barack Obama as one of the chief designers of the Affordable Care Act, now works for the OMB, which is supposed to be bipartisan. (laughs) <laughs> Brian Deese, director of the National Economic Council, worked under Obama. Cecil Rhodes, worked under Obama. Jared Bernstein, designer of Barack Obama's $800 billion economic stimulus package. Heather Bashi, member of the Council of Economic Advisors, was on Hillary Clinton's failed transition team. And one, another one, Barack Obama. Barack Obama's Affordable Care Act. Jeffrey Zentes, COVID-19, former under Barack Obama during his second term. Jennifer Grano, Barack Obama's auto industry bailout architect. Gina McCartney, head of the EPA under Barack Obama. Secretary of Agriculture under Barack Obama for eight years. Dennis McDonald, Secretary of the VA. Former Chief of Staff under, you guessed it, Barack Obama. Susan Rice, Director of Domestic Policy, former NSA for Barack Obama and UN Ambassador. And so it goes. 
Now, the direction of the, of the domestic policy advisor, the chief of staff, the Obama, or excuse me, Biden administration was literally appointing hundreds of second tier employees who work directly for the White House. Many of these appointees will work in the White House and West Wing and will fill positions at various departments who report to the White House. Looking at the above list of appointments and leadership positions, would it be far fetched to say who is actually running this country? Drifting back to 2009 and 10, we were on the right, knew that Barack Obama's sole position in life would destroy the United States. This is how, when the left will scream, he has a tinfoil hat. Not so fast, lefty. Barack Obama more than doubled our national debt in the first four years. Now, this is long before even all the COVID stuff they put on there and all those huge, huge stimulus packages will never be paid back. I don't know what's going to happen, but I digress. He simply decided to give billions to Iran to enrich uranium to build nuclear weapons. And I'm not going to read everything on here. Barack Obama's policy was also a foreign policy of dismal failure as Russia began to once again expand their influence. If all the above was not bad enough, our nation under Barack Obama drifted further and further left in acceptance of sexual perversion by our churches by marrying and sanctifying gay marriage. I'm 50-50 on that. I think it's a little strong-worded sexual perversion, but to each his own. I'm not sure if this government should just got in the marriage business, period. This is the one that does bug me, though. On top of that, men dressed as women can now use those restrooms with our preteen and teenage daughters, and now... Young males can enter sports and just bury girls because they're physically stronger and, and have tens of thousands of young ladies who train their whole lives not get scholarships. Our nation was rebuilding the military and along came a rejuvenation of dignity and patriotism. Our country had become nearly totally energy dependent. We were energy dependent. Prior to COVID, we had indisputably the world's leading economy and a robust attitude of American pride. Today, Iran is coming back. North Korea is once again making threats and launching rockets. Oil feeds are shutting down. Gasoline prices are rising faster than cryptocurrency. We have men dressed as women performing social experiments in our military. And oh, yes, we have them also using restrooms again with our daughters. Care to guess again who was actually president of the United States? Now, it's a very strongly worded article. Who really is the president? Who is the president? I don't care what color you are, what gender you are, what you use for a pronoun, how tall you are, whether you're married, not married, gay, straight, somewhere in between. I don't give a damn. Who is the president? Is Biden making all these decisions? Did Biden make the decision to withdraw military troops from air bases in Afghanistan Stop the air cover for the Afghan army two weeks before the Taliban overran the country. Was that President Biden's decision? Well, watch this short little clip. And maybe uh, huh, you'll see what I mean. Ladies and gentlemen, they gave me a list here. The first person I was instructed to call on was Kelly O'Donnell of NBC. Wow. Now, did he just misspeak? I don't think so. That's not just saying the wrong thing at the wrong time. That's what he really believed, because that's what really happened, as I was instructed. So, is he a placeholder? Looks like yes. Okay. But the buck stops with him. Well, it stops with his name. So who really and truly is the president? I don't think it's one person. I think it may be a small group, four, five, six, eight people, faceless, nameless, not elected, not appointed to the presidency, none of those things. They are truly running the biggest economy, and the most powerful military in the world. And they are far left woke progressives. And that, friends, is dangerous. 
And as time goes on, I'm becoming less and less empathetic to the decent Democrats that are out there last year that voted for Biden. I'm trying my hardest not to be just madder than hell, that to appeal to your better sense of patriotism, your better nature, that your hatred for Donald Trump was so strong that you didn't vote for Biden, you voted against Trump. Well, these, this is the repercussions. This is what happens when you vote against someone instead of for someone. I was a Democrat my whole life. I'll be 65 this November. I was a local elected official here in upstate New York on a local city council, medium-sized town. No big deal, but it was a pretty cool job. I had it for eight years. I was also the council president in 2006 as a Democrat, so technically the head Democrat. And I left the party in 2013, probably would have left it in 2008 or nine. But I just didn't get around to it. I was out of office in 2007. I was term limited. So I'm, I'm somewhat empathetic to old school Democrats because I used to be one my whole life. I understand. I understand you didn't like Donald Trump. Now, in 2016, when I voted for Donald Trump, when I still am a Trump supporter, did I dislike Hillary Clinton? You betcha. But did I vote against Hillary Clinton or did I vote for Donald Trump? I personally voted for Donald Trump. Whether you like it or not, too bad. Don't care if you like it. Don't care if you hate it. None of your business. That's my decision to make. But was it the right decision to vote against Donald Trump and not for somebody? Don't think it was. Even though it was your choice, You have a right to make the wrong decision. There's no question. But you're going to ask yourself now, you put this country, in the world for that matter, in an extremely precarious position. God knows where it's going to go. Our human human rights, our constitutional rights, our God-given rights here in the United States and in many areas in the world supposedly free, Australia is a good example of that, is getting trampled on. It's not getting trampled on here, a little bit here, a little bit there. It's being done exponentially. The Constitution is getting pounded like I've never seen it in my lifetime. And I was born in 1956. It is out of control. And the 10 or 15% in the middle of the independents, some of them, And many old school Democrats, blue collar worker Democrats that still believe the Democrats stick up for blue collar workers because they don't want to believe that they don't anymore and the Republican Party does still voted for Biden. I'll even say your hatred for Donald Trump was not the reason to vote for Biden. He's an old school Democrat and he's Uncle Joe. Well, just some fundamental research would have fixed that but that's okay. I'll give you a pass. What are you going to do now? What are you going to do now? Let me ask those moderate Democrats, those older old school Democrats that voted for Joe Biden. Who do you think is the president now? Do you think it's Joe Biden? Or do you think it's some secret group, faceless, nameless, unelected that's controlling this country and in essence the economic world tens of thousands are going to die in Afghanistan because of terrible decisions made by this faceless group that nobody knows who they are they're probably on some of the group that I listed earlier who knows but that's the point nobody knows nobody knows and they're unaccountable to anyone That should scare the hell out of you. So when you vote this November at state and local elections and you vote next November at state and local elections and the congressional midterms, think about that. Stop worrying about what party they belong to and there's a D in front of their name. 
But 10% in the middle are going to determine which way the government goes. Or the Constitution gets tore up some more, or it's mended and put that together, and our constitutional rights and our God-given rights are given back to us. It's your decision to make. Think about it. Really soul search. Look in the mirror and say, I made a mistake. And I'll try not to make the same mistake again. Because it is up to you how this republic that has stood for over 200 years, whether it falls or not, it's a tremendous responsibility and you should take it incredibly seriously. Until the next time, goodbye and good luck.